yeah, I have this paper that I don't like the conclusion of, but I'm forced to the, to accept. And that's called Can Liberalism Last or Is Liberalism oh, yeah. Sustainable? I think I shared it with you a year ago. Yes. We have yes. a follow-up to it. And ba- the argument, I don't want to go through it, but the argument in a nutshell is liberalism actually tends toward norms that do things like you're talking about. So low birth rates, low cohesion, social cohesion, et cetera. Even though that was not part of you know 19th century British liberalism, no, no doubt, but it seems to be a trend, and I'm worried that it might be a kind of global trend, and maybe liberalism in the long run is quite literally evolutionarily unstable. Leave that aside. That may be true, may, may not be true. My follow-up to it with one of my co-authors is, is called, um, I think tentatively we're calling it um, enlightened tribalism. And um, we're trying to defend a, a view that is, it's not anti-liberal, but it's sort of post-liberal, you might say. And I wanted to get your thoughts on this, Bo, because you have this paper with Corey um, called Tribalism is Human Nature. And you tend to be a liberal. I know by disposition, you certainly are. You're very tolerant. You like living a liberal society and so on. Do you think you can square tribalism and liberalism? And I don't just mean at any particular instant in time, but over time, can liberalism last? Is it compatible with these tribal features of human nature? What do you think? It's a great question. And so you're right. I think by disposition, I am liberal in that I tend to have a more um, live live and let live attitude personally. Like if I see something yeah. with which I disagree, I, I'm not compelled to insult it or argue against it necessarily. Um, yeah. But I've actually become much more skeptical of liberalism even over the past year. <laughs> so you're asking me at a time in which I'm post-liberal curious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think it's... I, I Speaking just, of different sexualities, yeah. yeah right, okay. exactly. <laughs> By the curious. way, for anybody who is my enemy who somehow heard this, I'm not actually a fascist. <laughs> that was a joke. Just want to let you know. Uh, but I They've am, already clipped it, Bo. It's already yeah, exactly. clipped. It's on yeah, YouTube. It's, it's, so, too late. it's too late. Um, I am actually post-liberal curious. I am inter- I, I do think, I, I think your arguments and other people's arguments about liberalism are correct, unfortunately. And in fact, the, the, I think the really difficult thing about liberalism is that liberalism has to be illiberal to preserve itself. Right. And this is something people have recognized. But once it starts to fail, so like take open borders, because the 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 progressive will say, well, what could be And the economist will say, what could be more illiberal than shutting your border to people and not allowing the free movement of people? But you will never preserve a liberal system if you have 100 percent open borders. It will fall apart. And why? Think of the example of the evolutionary stable strategy with which we started this conversation. What happens when you open a liberal society's borders to anybody? Too many people who will exploit it come in and they do exploit it and it breaks apart and fails. And so liberalism has to be illiberal to preserve itself. And we, I think too few people are willing to be illiberal anymore and just say like, look, look. And I think it was easier to be illiberal when our elite had a much more triumphant image of their own civilization. Like, Mm -hmm. as you know, Johnny and Matt, like we've lamented this, like our elite are masochists now. They've internalized this like Howard Zinn narrative that like white Europeans are uniquely pernicious evil actors in the Mm -hmm. world and have suffer some penance for this to hopefully expiate the angry woke gods right (laughs) and it's so bizarre to me because i think the only way you can preserve liberalism is to have have this attitude we're we're the best fucking civilization that's ever existed now every civilization thinks that and that's fine i want ours to think that too and we're going to protect this and we're going to inculcate the norms into our children that we're awesome Mm mm-hmm Look, like every, you know, talk about the noble lie. Like we, we, this is an interesting argument, but I used to debate my brother about this because he would complain that this was propaganda. And I said, yeah, of course it is. 
third graders are not going, you're not going to teach third graders a dispassionate array of facts. You have to propagandize people yeah. into your civilization and teach people the virtues of the civilization. And for many reasons, some of which you point out in your article, Johnny, liberal societies at some point they stop doing that and then they have low fertility rates they have to replace their population with peoples from elsewhere which isn't always bad but sometimes those people don't share the liberal values and it does start and also it, it racial diversity almost inevitably decreases trust which puts further exactly. strain on liberalism so johnny mm -hmm. i'm actually interested in your idea because i've been trying to figure out what is a post-liberal alternative with which I can feel I, I, I full harmony would be like, that's an utopian idea, but with which I, I can, I can feel comfortable because I am not a big fan of like the, the sort of Catholic integralism or the Deninism or the, this much more religious variant of post-liberalism. Yeah.